Today I have another Super VHS VCR for you. This is the Panasonic model NVHS 950. This would have been the follow-up model of the Panasonic NVHS 900 that we've fixed up. On this one we're probably not going to find any rotten candy on the inside. This used to belong to my grandmother. It was well kept and it does work. All we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of uh, servicing, a little bit of relubricating and uh, cleaning the heads and you know maybe a little bit of uh, cleaning out dust if there is any on this thing. The difference between the 950 that we have right here and the 900 is uh, this digital process. This thing has a digital time-based corrector and digital three-dimensional noise reduction, whatever that means. Uh, the time-based corrector, of course, when you want to transfer cassettes, is important. That's what I want to do with this thing, so this for me is much better than the HS900. As you can see, the inside is pretty similar to the HS900. Uh, we do have no more heatsink around here. If you remember, the 900 had a heatsink with a transistor mounted to it over that part. Well, that has been moved out to the back. We got a heatsink with two transistors, and this normally uh, is uh, clipped onto here. Uh, interestingly, we do have the heatsink, but the whole thing doesn't have any uh, any cooling vents. Uh, mechanism is the same, and from what I can tell, it's going to be exactly the same process to take it out. Something that I do not like is that over there, I kind of already expected that, the digital process also brought along some nice surface mount capacitors with it. So if this thing should ever have some problems with a picture, well, we'll know where we have to look. I will be taking that uh, circuit board out and I will be making sure that none of these capacitors are leaky. Let's take a look at the mechanism in action. I want to point out this to you, the little cleaning wheel. On this one that actually still works. So uh, you can hear where uh, the terrible noise comes from that this makes each time you load or unload a tape. There it is, loaded. We unload it again. There it is. It does work, but still I want to go through and uh, put, a little, put a little grease, a little oil in various places. As, as you can see, for example, these uh, guides, the, the tracks that these guides ride on, those are pretty dry. I can't see any grease or oil or anything on there at all. It's just a little little bit of a remains off of it stuck there on the sides. Here is the underside of the mechanism. Just got done greasing and lubricating this. Uh, there was still some grease left on these tracks down here, but when I wiped that off, I could tell it was absolutely dry, so no grease actually would have been better than that grease. Well, I now got my uh, the new stuff on there, as you can probably tell. Uh, we have over here belt, that's still good. As you can see, there is the somewhat troublesome uh, mode uh, sensor switch. Uh, this thing, it can go dirty and when it does the VCR is not going to work properly anymore. That's not the case on this VCR, so I'm not going to uh, mess with it, never touch a running system. Another thing, uh, this VCR has actually been in service at some point because at one point, along with the video cassette, my grandmother also inserted a piece of paper into the machine and that caused it to break. Uh, and I'm thinking it might be in here that uh, it was serviced. I do know they had to replace some of the plastic gears in this and uh, on the HS900, this gear, the grease was all pretty much gone. And uh, as you can clearly see on this one, there was plenty of it in there, so maybe this was the gear that broke. Something in that mechanism, but uh, this is definitely, this has a lot more grease in it than uh, the HS900, which is good. 
that means that I don't have to uh, mess with it. I now have the mechanism back in the chassis, and if we insert a tape, as you can see, it still works. I have uh, put new grease on these tracks. I have put uh, oil into all the pivot points, and very important, onto that axle where the uh, pinch roller glides up and down. So that's all fine. So you can also see I have uh, taken out this, uh, this horrible cleaning wheel. And, uh, well, as you can see, just look at that thing. That's not going to clean the heads up at all. That's only going to make them even dirtier. So, a good idea to take that out, because it's really not helpful anymore. And, of course, we don't get that horrible noise anymore. Much better. Cleaning the tape path, you do want to go through and you want to clean all the guides, which are over here, I guess you can't really see them. Uh, over here, of course, uh, over here we got some, uh, and over there, of course, also caps and pinch roller, the uh, sink head, the audio head, and the erase head over there. You can clean all that with just a cotton swab and some uh, some alcohol or uh, lighter fluid or something like that. For the head drum, however, it is important that you don't even get close to that with a cotton swab because it takes no effort whatsoever to rip out one of these heads and when you've done that you can replace the whole entire head drum and well, whether or not you're going to be able to even find a replacement for that uh, is kind of questionable. So here, once again, is the method that I'm using. I use uh, just a piece of uh, regular writing paper and I get my uh, cleaner on there. As you can see, it's nice and wet. I want to get some of the excess off of there. I don't want to drip that into the mechanism. And then we just uh, go ahead, go down with this piece of paper, push it onto the head drum, apply a little bit of force, and uh, don't move the paper. Don't move the paper at all. Just leave it where it is. And now you go ahead and you turn the head drum. You manually turn the head drum. You'll be able to feel the heads gliding across the paper on the other side. You will be able to feel that with your finger. So you just uh, keep turning this uh, head drum and uh, I'm going to do this in uh, several several steps. So. I'm going to go and uh, turn the drum for a while now, and then I'm eventually going to replace the paper with a new one, because obviously this one's going to get dirty. And then I'm going to spin it the other way around, and then again the other way around. You can be quite creative spinning the drum and uh, cleaning the heads. So we'll be, we'll be able to see in just a few moments how effective that stupid little head cleaning wheel really was, and I tell you, it probably wasn't all that effective. So anyway, that's I guess that's enough for the uh, for the first run. So let me uh, carefully release the pressure, take the piece of paper away, and yep, was definitely worthwhile. As you can see, we do have quite a bit of dirt stuck on there. So it's definitely a good thing that we've done that because, well, I guess this proves the cleaning wheel uh, after a while just becomes completely ineffective. I now have this one board removed. Panasonic calls this the YC pack, as you can probably read down there. There it is. Now I guess this is where all the digital processing magic happens. As you can see, got plenty of stuff on there, and we also got surface mount capacitors on here. That's why I wanted to take it out to make sure that there is nothing wrong with this. So you can see it does have this, uh, it's kind of a sandwich design. With this uh, part being all sealed up. And, uh, well, the good news is... These capacitors all appear to be perfectly fine. I looked at them closely and none of them appear to be leaky. And also if you smell this, if you have bad uh, surface mount capacitors, oftentimes you'll be able to, uh, to, to sense a, a sort of fishy smell. 
It was going to smell rather nasty, and, uh, well, this doesn't smell at all. It's neutral. So, I'd say this is fine, which is good. I mean, you could probably replace these capacitors on here. That wouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, you could, uh, there is even enough space you can, you can just fit in some regular electrolytics. Uh, but uh, with this thing, there are capacitors sealed into this unit right here, and uh, that might be a bit difficult to, uh, to take apart. So I can uh, go ahead and uh, drop this thing back in, and it should be all fine. Turns out this was kind of a quick service, I guess. Uh, cleaned up the inside of the display before putting the front panel back in its place. Well, now let's go ahead and uh, apply some power. And there it is. Still turns on. Insert a cassette. Ooh. Okay. Well, I guess the mechanism for the eject is different on this model, because uh, the door doesn't open anymore. On the other one, it just, uh, the whole thing just snapped straight back in place, and that was it. Well, it turns out you have to uh, push this door up slightly, and then it's uh, the whole faceplate just uh, clips in place. No problem, if you know about it. So, we put in a cassette. Well, let's turn it on. Put in the cassette. That all seems to work. Well, the picture on the screen tells a clear language, and that is the Panasonic NVHS 950 works. Picture does look pretty good. Audio does work. We are on the hi-fi tracks, as you can see on that meter. If it's in linear mono, the L and R uh, channel indicators will disappear. So there it is. As you can see. So, hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.